It's another beautiful day on the farm. A great day to do some tomato transplanting. Welcome back to Wishwell Farms, everybody. It sure is nice to see the sun. I actually got to wear my sunglasses in here today. It has been cloudy for so long and it actually feels like summertime in here. It's glorious. So today, I am uh, gonna be transplanting tomatoes into these four inch rock wool cubes. But first we need to mix acid and fertilizer into this tank of water to get the pH down to about 5.5 to 5.8 and get that EC raised up closer to 1.8 to 2. And then we'll saturate those cubes and then bring the tomatoes out from my basement and begin the transplanting process. So here's my box of sulfuric acid. We're going to start off with about a cup. You'd think by now I'd have the exact ounces figured out that's needed for a tank this size, but I only have the tank filled up about two thirds. So what I'm going to do is just uh, pour that acid in here. Then I use my handy dandy tomato steak just to stir it in a little bit. Once that gets mixed in good, I'll get my pH meter out and we'll give it a look and see how close we are. It takes a few minutes to get this uh, all stirred up well because you'll have some strong spots that are too acidic and then you'll have some spots that the acid has not reached. We're looking pretty good. Not sure if you can see that or not. 5.6. It's right where we want it. Next, I'm going to take a scoop of this starter fertilizer, a 91530. We'll just put a whole heaping cup in there. And then this container has calcium nitrate, 1500, I think. And I'm only going to put half. So two to one. Get this mixed up a little bit. It takes a few minutes for the calcium nitrate to dissolve well. As soon as this all gets dissolved well, we'll pour what we need in there to bring up the EC from 0.7, which is what my well water is, to about a 1.8. I'll let it go all the way up to 2, 2.1. It's kind of a guessing game how much we're going to need. We'll start off with about half of it and we'll see what we got for an EC here. It's looking like I'll need a little bit more. I'm about 1.5 right now. All right, I have all the plants out of the basement. Got them backed up here in the pickup. Gonna bring them indoors here into the nice warm greenhouse. All right, I got the water right where I want it, a pH of about five and a half with an EC of 1.9 and the temperature is 70 degrees. So it's absolutely perfect and ready to get the pump in and saturate these cubes one more time to flush out all that uh, regular well water that's in them right now and then we'll start the transplanting process. One of these days, this pump's gonna stop working. But I've been pretty lucky for many years. Still pumping good. Sounds like it's still working. Yep. I'll go ahead and pump out all this uh, well water that's stuck in here.
All right, all the four inch cubes are watered and we are ready to begin the transplant process. As you probably noticed, these flats are right on the insulation board. Now, once the roots grow through the block and I start to see roots coming out the bottom, I will take another empty flat and turn it upside down to put underneath this. So it props it up about an inch and a half, two inches, you know, the width of a flat. The reason I do that is because we want the roots to air prune. And what I mean by air pruning is that when they pop through the bottom of this cube, they'll come out to air and they will self prune. They will terminate themselves or shoot the rest of their roots up into the cube to fill the cube up instead of them sprawling out the bottom of the cube and growing all over the uh, insulation board. And it would be a complete disastrous mess. So that's why we want to prop those up to have them air pruned once they start shooting roots out the bottom. And that'll be, oh, I don't know, less than two weeks, maybe a week and a half, and uh, the roots will be coming through the bottom of these cubes. So now we're ready to transplant the cubes. It's a very simple process. My kids have been helping me do this since they were like four. I mean, it's that simple of a job. It's just one of these time consuming jobs that many, many hands makes it a lot simpler. But uh, now that all my kids are grown and pretty much out of the home, I still have my daughter still living at home, but uh, you know, she's always out doing her own thing. So it looks like it's just gonna be me in here today, but that's all right. You know, in an hour, I'll have it all done. It's not like it takes that long. All right, let me show you the process of transplanting the seedlings. All right, the first variety we are doing is Geronimo. And I'll put a tag there so we know what variety it is. Sometimes getting this started is a little difficult. We'll just grab a couple chunks out of here. Usually I break the slabs off in big chunks and distribute them. So here's what they look like on the bottom. I'm starting to see the roots coming out the side of the cube. Usually they're coming out the bottom by now, but they're a little smaller than normal because I'm about a week behind. So there's a one inch cube and it just goes right down the hole. Give it a little shove and that's all there is to it. And then these uh, extras that didn't have a plant, I'll just throw back in there and discard the trash. So here's a block of four and you can see there's one that didn't grow. So you just give them a little tear, pop them in the hole. And you can use both hands at once. Really quick and simple. So I'll just break off some slabs like that, lay them around. And set them around on these four inch blocks. And here's a good example of the air pruning I was talking about. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking that up, but this entire slab, you can see the little white roots that have started to come out the bottom of these little one inch cubes. And they were propped up off of the table down in my basement. They weren't on the insulation board or directly on the heat mats or they would be a big white mass of roots down here. So when they come out and touch the air, they'll start filling the cube all around from side to side and that's what you want. So now that you're watching me do this, you probably understand that uh, any little child with two hands can easily do this job. So these plants are currently about 12 days old. Normally they're about 20 when I bring them out here and the first true leaf is a little bigger. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. So these first two larger leaves on the outside are the cotyledon. That's the first thing that emerges out of the sprouted seed, the germinated seed. And then you can see right in the middle, that is the first true leaf that is uh, starting to emerge. So that's when we like to transplant these. Normally the first true leaf is about the same size as the cotyledon when I do the transplanting, but uh, by then the, they're getting about three inches tall and they're just getting too crowded in that tight space in my basement. You know, there's 100 cubes in that flat and that's just too many when the plants get that big and they start crowding each other out. So this is the perfect time to do the seedling transplanting when you start seeing the first true leaf like that. And about a month from now, these plants will be all 12 to 15 inches tall with little tomato clusters starting to form. And that's when we'll move them into the large greenhouse where they will be set into the Dutch Beto buckets and remain for the, the entirety of their lives, which is, well, you know, sometime in September, we'll probably rip them out. 
once the field tomatoes are coming on really strong, will uh, usually be done with the hydroponic tomatoes. This job tends to get to your back after a little while. So you just gotta make sure you bend at your knees so you don't injure your back. See this one? It's a double. Two seeds accidentally got dropped in the hole. So you just gotta pluck one. You hate doing that because that's an expensive seed, 80 some cents per seed. But you can't have doubles. Every plant needs to be a single. Something I wanted to discuss real quick about seeding hydroponic tomatoes is that we overseed by probably 15 to 20 percent. And the reason we do that is because germination rates are not 100 percent. Somewhere probably between 90 and 98 is pretty typical. Especially when you're seeding in a dead of winter in mid-January. And if you don't have your heat just right, you know, you're going to have worse germination. So we want to overseed so we have plenty of seeds. Also, because we want to choose the best of the best. So I would rather have too many to choose from. That way, if there are some underdeveloped or scrawny, worthless looking plants, I will leave those behind. We'll call those and we'll just plant the best ones. Now, when these go to be put, are ready to be put in the main greenhouse here next month, we will also go through a weeding process, weeding out the, the weakest ones, the scrawniest ones, and leave those behind. So these four inch cubes, we will over, we're over planting by at least 10% because not every one of them are gonna grow into a perfect tomato plant. So by doing that twice, that ensures us to have the best, healthiest plants possible to grow out to maturity. So here's a perfect example of why we overplant. If you look at these closely, you can see how little and pathetic they look. Those are not healthy plants. But it looks like my germination rate was better than I expected because I have an entire flat of 100 seeds left over of Geronimo. Um, if I planted all those, I would have far too many and it's better to have too many now than later because I don't have a lot of input costs into these growing these right now. Just the seed costs, a little bit of time watering them and putting lights on them. So yeah, unfortunately we're going to have way too many plants this year, but that is a good problem to have. You would rather have way too many good plants than not enough because then you're in big trouble. Well, folks, another day of greenhouse farming in the books. Feels good to have the transplanting done, and I feel like we're finally making some headway and getting caught up. I might even have time to go out for a run before it gets dark. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you again real soon down on the farm.